Um, today we have something interesting, and I, I show all the different knives, okay? I've talked about this before, but I'm going to just mention it again, that I show knives that I don't like. I show knives that are not my style. I try to just show everything. Uh, this is one today that fits that category. It's not my style. I don't really like it. But we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to be objective, and I'm going to tell you why and what and who, who the who, what, where, when, and why of this knife from Reich Knife. Here is some uh, information about them. If you do not already know, if it will focus, maybe right there. All right, so this was sent to me from uh, my buddy Ozzy Mike. It belongs to him. I don't remember exactly where he bought it from was it atlantic knife it was atlantic knife as i'm looking down to the box under the table and it did come with this pen like tool it they kind of advertise it as a knife and a pen but when you really read the description on all the websites i was reading the blade hq one it says titanium knife and pen well this isn't really a pen Let's just talk about this one first. It is a pen-like tool. They say farther down in the description. So it looks like a pen. It has a pocket clip with a tip down, they call it. There is a pry bar. Very small. Uh, it is made out of titanium. Kind of has a swoop here on this side. So you could use it as a pry bar. Bottle opener, glass breaker, and if you unscrew, it does have a T6 and a T8 uh, bit for use on this knife or really any other knife, right? And it does give you some grip. If you were to get in here, it does give you some leverage to um, take this knife apart, tighten the pivot, whatever, whatever, right? Um, so it is a useful tool, but I think Ozzy Mike was a little disappointed when I told him it wasn't actually a pen. All right, so, and no big deal. It is what it is. So let's talk about the knife here. Um, this is the Alien 4 DG for dark gray. Um, yeah, it is absolutely designed after the movie Predator um, to give the scales of the Predator's armor and things like that, which is great. I, I love those movies. I'm not sure they need to make another one that's coming out relatively soon at the time of filming. I just saw commercials for it, or maybe it is out. Alien uh, Resolution? Revolution? I don't know. how. Guys, Hollywood... People, can we come up with... Man, I zoomed out way too much there. Um, can we come up with original movie ideas out of Hollywood? I mean, we had Beverly Hills Cop 4. We've got Tom Cruise, I hear, doing Mission Impossible 8. Eight? There's eight Mission Impossibles already? Well, seven already. And he's filming number eight? Get out of here. Okay, anyway... Let me step off my soapbox for a moment and get back to this knife at hand. This is a very uh, upswept Persian style, kind of a trailing uh, point blade, I think they call it. Uh, this style knife with the upswept Persian style blade is really never my style. I, I've mentioned that before. No big deal. It's, it's all good. Um, yeah, I just, it's not my thing. Now, the knife itself runs really good. It's on ceramic bearings. Um, it, the other thing that kind of is, there's a couple of interesting things we'll get to, but in several of the descriptions I read, it doesn't call it an integral knife, but it says that the handle is milled out of a solid piece of titanium, making it stronger and requiring more skill to make and things like that. Um, and then I saw one other YouTube guy 
do a video on TikTok where he also alluded to it being made out of a single block of titanium. Well, that's just not the case. There's eh, Unless I'm really missing something, that looks like a seam to me, like a very traditional knife that also carries through to the inside. You can see the seam there. And if it was an integral or an integral, however you want to say it, it would not have body screws holding it together. So there's some interesting advertising, advertising marketing happening here. Now, one thing that is cool and unique that I have not seen often is the blade is really thin. The blade thickness is 0 0.075 because the blade goes into this blade chassis, if you will, with hardware here and here. So I presuming we could take those two screws out and this whole blade would just come out. And then your flipper tab and everything is built into that chassis. Uh, it is a unique style. It does have the blade quote unquote, flowing more into the scale and things like that. So I think that's a really cool idea. Um, it is unique. I've seen something similar to that before. Like the, um, what is it? The g, &G Hawk Knives shortcut does that. The utility blade kind of goes into something similar to that, right? Um, just an observation, just a cool thing. You know, a little tidbit, if you will. All right, some specs on this thing, five and an eighth closed. Just a hair over nine inches overall. The blade is 4.01 from the edge of the scale to the tip of the blade, which gives you 3.37 inches of cutting edge here. Really nice finger choil. Feels really comfortable in the hand. You know, it is cool. For that fact, you know, there's nothing wrong with this knife. Um, it is Damasteel blade, weighs in at 3.5 ounces. Your pen tool, pen-like tool, is very well machined. It is solid titanium. I mean, it, this is a nice piece, no question. Would I prefer it to be a pen also? Yeah, but that's just me. This weighs in at 1.4 ounces, okay? Um... Richard Wu, who is the designer of this knife, as well as the owner and founder of Reich Knives, which is a unique company in general. They do a lot of this futuristic style of knives, which doesn't excite me, but it excites a lot of other people. Ozzy Mike, for one, spent, I don't know, around $400 US for this. I don't know what that translates to to Aussie dollars, but yeah. And then he's going to spend some in shipping and whatnot because I ship it to a freight forwarder. Then he ships it down to him. Like, so yeah, it's his style. And, and he can't even carry it in Australia. So he's buying knives purely to collect because you can't carry them. Okay. Um, so yeah, Richard Wu is the designer of this knife and the owner of Reg Knives. Reg Knife also does the production, well, some of the production knives for Microtech. The Socom Bravo is made by Reich Knives. So, yeah, they are no slouch in the knife world. Here it is with the Sharpie, the Spyterco Delica, um, I don't even have anything. I do have some weird stuff here. Some people call weird. The Red Horse Knife Works Hellraiser, which, yes, does kind of curve up a little bit. Okay. Um, now that these are side by side, there are some similarities. The handle shape is similar. This one is a little more curved. The blades do sweep up slightly. So there are some similarities. And I like some weird knives also, right? It's just, it's interesting because I think we all have different tastes and that's what's great about 
the knife community is there are so many options out there. If you don't like what I like, no problem. I've heard a lot of people talk smack about the Hellraisers and that whole lineup and whatnot. And that's totally fine. I'm not talking smack about this. I'm just saying it's not my style. Like, I don't talk smack about stuff. I try not to. Um, but the same thing goes with YouTube. There's so many different YouTube channels and people uploading videos. If you don't like my style, go listen to somebody else. Go watch somebody else. Like, that's what makes the YouTube world go around. That's what makes the knife world go around is there's something for everyone. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I do greatly appreciate it. And I would love to hear your take on the futuristic knives that are out there in the world. And, you know, and do you have a pen tool? Kind of cool. Thanks, guys.